Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. It has been two weeks of high drama at the South African National Roads Agency, with a court order preventing the controversial Gauteng eToll project from going live, followed by news that the CEO has resigned. Irma Fentz is with me in studio to take a look at developments. Irma, welcome to Second Take. Yeah. It has been a long road to this point. Can you take us through how we got here? The project's actually much older than people would realize. I think we first started writing about this in the 1990s, and then 2000 and 2002, we wrote an article where uh, Sunroll CEO Nazir Ali said um, he's confident tolling will go ahead on Gauteng Roads. Now, 12, uh, 10 years later, we're there, 2012. Construction started in 2008. We were supposed to be finished by 20, uh, 2010. However, that got held up by, uh, there was a shortage of bitumen. There was problems with a lot of rain. Um, we also had the 2010 World Cup happening. Uh, there was also a lot of public protest all of a sudden, and there was a bit of to and fro more public consultation, um, discounts being offered, until finally we were supposed to go live on April the 30th. However, that was stopped then. There was a meeting between ANC and Kasatu, and um, they agreed to give another month for more uh, to look at other ways of funding this project. There was also a court action by the Opposition to Urban Tolling Alliance, and they were in granted an interdict for uh, a legal review of this entire system. So we had all of that, and now finally we have a ministerial committee under the guidance of Deputy President Khalema Motlanti looking at this whole issue, hopefully coming up with a solution. Because we have this 20 billion rand bill we have to pay now, but uh, the public seems unwilling to pay toll. There's a lot of blame being thrown around. What is your opinion on this? There's several aspects to consider, I think. For one, you have to ask why the public woke up so late to a degree. I mean, we first wrote about this in the 1990s. We weren't the only ones doing so. It was in the media space for 10, 12 years. So why wait so long before there was a public outcry against this? Then you also have to ask Sunroll, uh, the CEO has resigned, Nazir Ali. Um, from experience, from working with him as a media member, he's a very poor communicator, unfortunately. I was in a meeting where he spoke to a 702 um, journalist and he told her that he couldn't explain that to her because she wouldn't understand. And that's not the best way that you endear yourself to the public or to journalists. So we have this on the one side, but on the other side, Sunral is a, a very well-run public entity. Uh, Nazir Ali is a very competent person. There's not a whiff of corruption about Sunral or Nazir, Nazir Ali. In this position, it was extremely competent um, entity running the national roads in South Africa. So you also have to say that. However, if you compare the communication strategy of this big toll project with the Hartran project, for example, and you just look at the way CEO Jack van Amara was always willing to speak to every media person at all times of the day, uh, it doesn't matter who, punting the project at public conferences, speaking to the media, he was highly accessible and he would always proposed this project to people and he got it sold. And it was a highly unpopular project as well. Remember, we had to expropriate, the government had to expropriate around a thousand properties for that project. Nobody wanted the drain near them. But somehow that got pushed through. So you could see there was a huge difference between the way that um, Sunroll approached their difficult project and the way the Hartrain approached their difficult project. Then uh, the third thing to consider is that it's not possible for a p politicians now, they're all backing away from the project, but is it really fair for all politicians to now say Sunroll misled them or they didn't know about the project or the impact of this? The basic fact was that the public was going to pay 50, 60 cents a kilometre or whatever it was and it has become now through uh, various amounts of discounts being offered. That has always been the truth. So is it really fair for politicians to now step away from the project and say we weren't aware of this while they publicly endorsed it? It was a government policy. Sunroll only, was only executing a public a government endorsed policy that was and mandate that was provided to them. So that is a good question. I think when Nazir Ali looked over his shoulder, he found no political backing for his project. And again, you can compare that with the BRT project in Johannesburg, Rio Vea. Again, unpopular project. Taxi organizations hated it. But there was political will to just simply push it through. Um, the project leader there resigned halfway through it as well. But member of the mayoral committee, Rihanna Musaji, just pushed it through. She got the backing of the De um, Minister of Transport, Sibisusun Debele, and they just pushed it through. And again, I th don't think Nazir Ali remotely had this kind of support from the politicians. And again, because they realize it's all uh, uh, very unpopular with the public now, they're all trying to back away from it. And I think that's simply not fair to Sanra or Nazir Ali. Irma, what is the way forward now? Well, we have this bull, we have to pay it basic fact. And I don't think anybody should get too excited about toll maybe going away because it's not been scrapped yet. 
there's just we're all relooking at um, governments, various agencies are looking at what to do. Treasury has said they haven't got the money for this. So various options. We may still have the system in a month or two from now. We may have new taxes, VAT, company tax, uh, uh, increase in income tax. Doesn't matter. Somehow we have to fund this, and I do think the public is going to pay for this and for the court fees. That's also good. court courts are not going to be paid by themselves. Um, so we have this consider that we simply have to pay this bill and we also have to consider the consequences of this later on. We have big infrastructure projects being rolled out. We have Transnet and Prasa and Iskom still having to go to the markets and get money, borrow money for their big infrastructure projects. We're talking billions of rands. The question is how expensive will this capital become? Because Sunroll's already been downgraded now by ratings agencies. Will this flow through to our other infrastructure projects? And what will this be? Uh, what will the influence of this be on our other infrastructure projects? And it could have a very negative influence on, on South Africa's economy as a whole. Emma, thank you very much. That is the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.